So there's my truck down in the little hollow there. And we are on another day of adventure. Now, as you can see, the road gets a little worse. I mean, I'm sure we could make it, but if we did get stuck, <laughs> like I said, the truck would have to be burned in place. It is really freaking cold today, too, which is kind of like a pain because I figured I thought it would be a lot warmer out here in Arizona. Um, but it's uh, very damp and it was drizzly this morning. Looks like it's getting ready to rain again, so we'll keep our eyes open for a rock shelter. But let's go ahead and keep working our way down to the river. Uh, we'll get the machine on if we see any quartz, uh, but until then, we're going to just, uh, we'll just save the batteries. Well, I'd like to get down to the river so we can get a little uh, rock shelter, or at least find one because it's starting to rain a little harder. Of course, I'm getting soaked anyway. Might be problematic here, because as you can tell, we seem to be quite a bit off the river and it looks like there's a cliff right in front of, right in front of us. So let's take a peek at this. <sighs> so uh, pour off and it looks like it's straight down. So we're gonna have, wow, that's beautiful. Should be a little quieter, I guess. Might see some eating mules like a Sam Squinch. Yeah, we're not gonna get this poor off, are we? Too, too high, it's about 15 feet. Another one right below it. Nice shelter there, though. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go up and around um, one of these banks, I'll take a look at it, and I'll get you back out when we get down there. At least the river's not too high. It didn't rain too hard last night. Poor off right there. Beautiful canyon, though, but there's no place to get down. And a uh, nice wide open area up in there. That looks really interesting. I thought there was a fence down there in the bottom. That's actually just a tree. Cave on the other side that we'll check out. I don't want to take too many chances since we're by ourselves. So I'm not going to go down there. We'll have to just keep going around this edge. And hopefully, eventually we'll get to the spot we can slide down to the bottom. Nice red dirt over there. That's good. Might be some gold in it. We'll check it with the machine. Well, we're almost to the bottom. It's raining and there's a weird rock. It looks almost like a message rock to me. Let's go find a cave shelter and think about that. Get out of this rain for a few minutes. I mean, it's not too bad right now, but if it comes down any harder, and it's a cold rain, and it's surprising. It's not actually uh, snow. Wow, I'm surprised that thing wasn't logged off. It's a nice cave over there, too, isn't it? Wow, that's sweet. That might, that's probably the cave I saw from way back down the river. It actually came quite a ways. Um, you know what? Let's just go over there. So let's see if we can get in this cave for a little bit. Get out of this rain. Of course, as soon as I turned the camera off, it started raining harder. And I came upon this. <laughs> this is awesome. This is a uh, matate. This is where the Indians would grind their acorns and corn and nuts and all kinds of other stuff to make flour. All right, so let's go ahead and get across this river probably use that for shelter but it's also a nice beautiful bottom here they could have used as well beautiful stones here huh nice landscaping stones well, shoot. yeah okay we get across here no problem rocks are very slippery now so i gotta be extra careful which will be on the wrong side of the river in case it starts to come up but oh well we'll keep an eye on it I'm looking for a place I can get across without getting my feet wet. Maybe right here. That's really slippery there, isn't it? Let's not do that one. I might do this lower one, though. That's not bad, but it is slippery. I think I can hit that one and that one. A little momentum. Hey, no slips. Good, we're across. Let's get in the cave. Jeez. Ow. Man, I almost fell over. That little stick right there caught in the nape of my neck and kept me from pitching over backwards. Wow, that was pretty amazing. Well, I don't know if there's gonna be anything cool here, but at least it'll be dry. Boy. <laughs> That's what happens when you get in a hurry. All right, watch out for snakes. All right, good. Smoke darkened. All right, I'm gonna I sit down for a minute, try to warm my fingers up. As soon as it quits raining, we'll get back out there. It's been about 20 minutes or so and the rain's really slacked off. 
Um, so we'll get a move on, but I want to show you what it looks like from the cave entrance. That's looking down river. Those, that's the pour off we came to right over in that area. So we're going to go up about, oh, about a, I don't know, half, about a half a mile to a mile today. I'm not exactly sure. We're going to uh, go past a couple canyons. Here's the cave. Give you another quick shot of that. I'm not sure if that's smoke darkening or just the natural patina. But I did want to show you this though. Yeah, I forgot about this. Um, if you look here, this tree limb here, and you see this debris, that's from floods. So this river floods up to this level at times. Now you can see the stuff in the trees right there, those little balls of stuff. That's how you can tell how high a river floods, at least recently, by the stuff that gets caught in the branches. Current came down to here, kind of made like a little whirlpool right in this area, low pressure area, and all the stuff went up against the wall. Oh, um, just one more thing. If you remember Columbo, a couple things I want to show you before I leave the cave. The first is uh, this, um, the bedrock here, and all these rocks had been cemented onto the bedrock, and of course it's been washed away. So at one time, the river bottom was up here. This was a river bottom, could have been millions of years ago but it's all been washed away and that's why all those loose rocks are out there right now. Another thing I wanted to show you was over here, I'm getting into an area where it looks like um, there could be some gold bearing minerals. So we're gonna go ahead and get the metal detector and check a few of those as we're going along. Um, you see little veins. We're gonna start checking when we see some of this stuff because we might get lucky, who knows. <laughs> and you might ask, hey Chig, why don't you look in the cave? Well, here's the reason why. On the government land, like I've said before in the videos, uh, you cannot look for handmade artifacts. So if I found anything in the cave, we know it's going to be man-made. Even if I found gold nuggets, that would be a technicality that they could get you on. Because I can look out here for gold nuggets and gold in the rocks. I could file a claim and mine it all I want. But if they were in a cave like that, they could say that those were picked up by someone in someone's possession, they brought it in there. So it's not really a naturally occurring mineral out there, it's something someone lost. So it's an artifact. Um, so you gotta be really careful about that. I know it's a huge technicality, but if they wanted to nail you, they could nail you on that. Of course, the jury would have to convict you, but it's a possibility and you spend a lot of money defending yourself. So I'm not gonna turn my metal detector on in the cave. <laughs> well, just when the skies cleared and some more storms off to the side that might miss us but it might get us uh, i just wanted to point this out to you one more time because i just i'm just absolutely fascinated by this and i think that's part of the reason i do what i do because when you find things like this it brings you you know it makes you think it makes you think about life and what other people did a thousand years ago but i bet you there was a lot of a lot of grit in their flower and when they were done i wonder if they uh we're able to get a lot of that out by soaking it or something. But you can just you can just imagine the women kneeling here and doing the grinding or kneeling there or whatever. So the cave's right down there, and I'm working my way up the river. And there's a nice big open area, big flat rock, and looky, there are little grinding holes everywhere. Isn't that cool? Look at that. I love it. Now, these could be 500 years old. They could be thousands of years old. I'm always excited to find these little things like this out in the middle of nowhere. There's more up in here, too. They're not quite as distinct, but they're all the way up through here. <laughs> yeah, a couple more there. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I mean, this whole rock must have been carpeted with people. Of course, this could have been done over the course of a thousand years, too, so... That may not have been the case. It started raining again, so I came up to a little rock shelter. That was trying to stay dry. Here's, uh, you can see this big rock here. Recently, well, recently, fell out of here because it was up there. You can see that? I know that because that's that rat, rat doo doo. And I thought what we'd do is just hang out down here for a minute. Got this uh, uh, rain. It's actually almost stopped though. As soon as I got here, it stopped. And, uh, We'll, um, we'll continue up river. A couple more minutes. <laughs> it is almost stop now. <laughs> oh, that's typical. Oh well. 
Well, naturally, as soon as I left the sanctuary of the cave, um, it started raining again. So I came up here under the cedar trees to try to get out of it a little bit. And I noticed a big hump or pile of fur right there, which is deer fur. And as I turn around this way, I uh, just want to warn you, you're going to look at a dead deer. It won't be gross, I promise. So it's a nice old mule deer, big old buck. That was uh, this year's kill, I would suppose. It doesn't look like it's too torn apart, but it is. Now, what I think happened is, that's where he died. That's where the fur started. Probably came off that cliff right there. And I suspect, because I've seen this happen at home, is where I live, we have cliffs just like that. When the deer hunters will spook the deer and get them running, they'll run off the cliffs and uh, fall and die. And I think that's probably what happened here. I've seen it happen many times right where I live in the past 30 years. I wish I had a little bone saw. I'd go ahead and get those uh, antlers, but I didn't bring one with me. Oh, something's growling. <laughs> I didn't eat enough for breakfast. That's a neat little overhang. I might go up and look at that, but might not too. This is really interesting. This is evidence of a spring. That's like uh, calcium that's leaching out of the limestone or whatever's up there and forming. Look at that. These are old roots. See how hard? It's hard. So these are the roots of trees and the calcium's leaching out of this spring when it's wet. Uh, maybe hasn't done it for 100 years, I don't know. And uh, forming this. And this is the formation that I was looking at in another video asking you if that's what it was, if it's from like an old spring. I suspect it is. So this is probably evidence of a much more wet time. Look at that. It looks like a bone. I guess that's just a tree root, but it looks like a bone uh, with a calcification over it. Yeah. If I look up, uh, up river, I can see that it's really green, so it's probably water still coming out there. So we'll look at that too. But I want to share this with you. I think it's awesome, man. Spring move from here to there. Another cave up there. It looks like those rocks might be stacked in front of it. So I think we should go up and check that out real quick. Of course, that's where we came from down through there. If there's anything up there, I'll show it to you. If not, I'm just going to keep moving and climbing. So I'm up at that little cave area and there, there's nothing up here, but it's a pretty good signal. Well, not a good signal, but I can tell that there's minerals in it. I don't know what kind of stone that is. It might be pyrites, I guess, that black stuff. Uh, it's not giving like a good sound, but I, I can just tell that there's minerals in it. So um, kind of like an irony sound. We might be getting close. It looks like it's getting redder and redder too as we go up the hill. Now this would make an awesome camping spot. Look how deep the water is. It's got all these little places here where they, you know, they ground the... The uh, meal, but deep, you could dive off of here, no problem, couldn't you? No, oh, kind of shallow. You wonder if there's any treasures down there full of bars of silver and gold. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I love to go in it. Not today. <laughs> uh, a little too chilly for that. I don't have the gear. Finally getting hot, so I had to take my jacket off. Looks like there's another storm coming. So I reckon I best be finding some shelter. <laughs> oh, yeah. The reason I stopped is uh, take my jacket off. I also wanted to show you, that's a beaver dam. So there's beaver out here somewhere swimming around, which isn't that surprising, really. All right, let's let's uh, let's go get close to shelter anyway. So I popped in the first little rock hole that I found. Uh, as long as it doesn't rain too hard, we'll be okay. It's absolutely amazing how much colder I got, though, as soon as that rain hit. I remember, I put my jacket back on, and I, already, I just climbed the hill again. Whew. You know, this uh, search that I'm on reminds me a lot of the old uh, lost gold mine stories. I'm reading, a, I read a book last night, a whole book, about a lot of the lost gold mines and silver mines out here in Arizona, Utah, and whatnot. I was put out by Desert Magazine, and this was a reprint of a book that was printed like in 1950, <laughs> so it's really old. But I was talking about the gold mines and the lost ones that, you know, people are looking for, and those mines were lost. 50 years before the book was published. So like around turn of the century, 1880, 19, you know, 1910, they were lost. And people searching for them. And I think, I'm thinking how I'm doing this, searching for something that was lost. Uh, you know, my one of my fans told me there's a treasure out here that he saw 50 years ago. <laughs> and he can't remember exactly where it was and this and that. So just like, 
It's like looking for one of the lost coal mines in the book I just read. It's almost it's like a blueprint. <laughs> Who knows? It might be out here, but uh, we haven't found it yet. Look right in the center of the screen. There's a newie. A little baby cow. Looks like he uh, is pretty young. <laughs> right there. He's cute. We won't bother him because mom is right over here. I just saw her. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that little adventure. I'm going to hoof it back to the truck pretty quick. Uh, another little storm coming in. There's little ice pellets bouncing off me. I didn't get very far looking for the mine. Kind of running out of time. It's 3 o'clock already. So it's a big flat rock we walked out on that was just absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful spot. Hope I get back here one day. And I hope you get to see it one day as well. Until then. She'll shake the coins from your pocket, take your gold chain and your locket. Mother Earth has no sympathy. She'll take the ring from your hand and bury it in the sand and keep it for eternity.